This world is full of lies because this world is a lie. Deception is everywhere. That's pretty obvious by now. But the deception is the deception. And what I mean is we are deceived by the idea that we can turn around deception in a world of lies when we don't understand that we're in the land of lying. Why are we in the land of lying? What did we do wrong? And how do we get out? These are really the pressing questions. Well, we're in a land that never gives us full coherent truth because we haven't been existing in a state of consciousness that values the full truth. Why are we in a world of lies? As much as we may want to blame external situations out of our control for our suffering, this still doesn't give us a clear understanding as to why we're here in this matrix. The answer to this question is truly simple. A soul only incarnates into a realm of deception if that soul has been deceiving themselves. To limit oneself and not value the fullness of expansive energies that exist within the heart is to give in to self-deception. And this world is the exact materialization of that deception. So to exit this world of lies and enter paradise, a realm and state that is centered in truth, a soul must stop limiting and thus deceiving themselves. Many who wish to enter paradise foolishly think it can be accomplished through accepting particular ideas or doctrines or savior figures. But this is actually the opposite of how a soul liberates themselves. To think a belief can save us from ourselves is to give in to more limitation and thus more deception. Paradise, what I refer to as Hyperborea, can only be accessed when we merge every energy within us, and this does involve pulling away consent from the charade of beliefs. Beliefs are always lies. A belief is a mere acceptance of something, whereas an intuition is a deep-rooted knowing paired with feeling that transcends theory and assumption. A lie, a deception, an illusion can seem so sweet and attractive. When we deceive ourselves, we usually do so out of a harmless intention to have fun or to gain knowledge or to engage in something beneficial. Nobody actively is giving in to deception consciously. But that's the problem. Nobody gives in to deception consciously. When we aren't conscious, when we are unconscious, unaware in any capacity in regards to our lives and decisions, we automatically gravitate towards deception. When we are asleep at the wheel, so to speak, we end up lying to ourselves. Self-deception involves avoiding one's true nature and feelings due to fear and convenience, or maybe I should say, the convenience of fear. It might seem backwards, but we all know deep down it is quite convenient to give in to fear. We have seen so much fear 
around us, so much deception, that it's quite easy and effortless to be a part of it. But when we deceive ourselves, when we limit ourselves, it's really the same thing, when we give into anything, and I mean anything that is even slightly skewed and imprisoning, we end up being agents of deception. So if one is sleeping at the wheel, not taking full responsibility for the energies surrounding them and in them, then one has no right to wish for a better existence. Escapism is self-deception. A lie can appear sweet, but unlike a lie, the truth is always harsh. The truth must be harsh, must be cutting, because the truth cuts away at that which is false. When we realize that we've been existing in a self-made prison of deception in any capacity, it is painful. Many begin their path of liberation by thinking positivity is the answer to bondage. After all, won't love, light, and rainbows solve the ugliness? Well, not exactly. Pain is a necessary feeling to experience as we transcend our self-deception. Pain reveals to us the locked-in emotion that has been creating unawareness. But if we attach to positivity, then we may deem pain or confronting one's inner shadows as wrong or negative. That which we have called negative or monstrous or dark within us has really been the parts of ourselves we've been suppressing and avoiding. When we avoid any part of ourselves, that part magnifies itself in order to be known, and that magnification may initially seem like some kind of ailment, but the only reason we ever feel ailed or ill, and I mean physically, emotionally, or spiritually, is due to the allegiance to some illusion. This is a truth that may seem harsh. After all, many of us can sit back in this moment and feel something that isn't in alignment with our hearts. And you know what? This observation is wonderful. We are here to realize these things. To stop deceiving ourselves, we must value discomfort. Not because discomfort should be put on a pedestal, but because our discomfort in any moment should be listened to and embraced so we learn from that discomfort, so we can hug that discomfort instead of running away from it. In self-deception, we think we can avoid, 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 and let our escapist fantasies run amok. And we can do this if we choose. We can. But every bit of avoidance manifests itself always as further imprisonment. Those who do not understand the grand cosmic principle of as within, so without, shall always blame this imprisonment on external situations. The irony about what I'm saying is our personal lives are filled with the output of our energetic input. So if one claims they are imprisoned by events out of their control, it will absolutely appear that they're imprisoned by events out of their control. Energy in, energy out. Quite obviously, it takes courage, true self-evaluation, and honesty to transmute oneself from lead into gold, from unconscious into conscious. It takes boundary setting. The attitude of, I'm not going to take it anymore, is crucial 
in this process of ascension. When most beings hear this type of phrase, I'm not going to take it anymore, they might think of resisting tyranny or pushing against some regime, against humanity or something. This is not what I'm talking about. To not take it anymore is to not take any more bullshit from yourself. And you know what? When you accept toxicity into your life in any capacity, that's actually coming from you because you are the one who allowed that into your sphere. To not take it anymore is to not take any more bullshit from yourself. I can't say it in a more frank manner. Many have allowed themselves to remain in a state of even slight forgetfulness of their power because of a lack of clear boundaries with themselves and thus with others. It may seem paradoxical, but in order to truly experience the boundless energies of the divine, and the divine is boundless, baby, we must set up boundaries and only accept that which leads into the divine. How do we know what leads into the divine? If our perspectives and actions and energies and decisions and interactions lead into more empowerment and remembrance, then that which we're engaging with is leading into the divine. It's not necessarily some mystical idea. But if we follow our energies and our acceptances, but that leads to a state where we feel more broken or more uncomfortable, this is how we know that which we're experimenting with is an illusion or delusion. We can be clear in regards to the energies we shall and shall not accept from ourselves and into our lives. Setting clear boundaries is a manifestation of the sacred masculine. With feet planted in the fertile ground of the feminine, of spirit, we can then use that inspiration to shape each moment into one that leads further into truth, harmony, bliss, and most importantly, empowerment. Because without empowerment, without feeling the authentic power within us, we can never exist in an empowered realm, free of deception. When many think of cosmic consciousness or ascension, they think of grandiosity. You know, talking with spirit guides or blasting into different dimensions or manifesting powers or something. These are experiences that can absolutely occur. But if we think they are the reason we should walk a path of resurrection, then we know nothing of resurrection and we are still in escapism mode. Mystical experiences naturally unfold in our paths as we rise out of our self-made bondage. They're nothing to attach to. Beings who are attached to their avoidance of what's true within them and what's in opposition to their own hearts make excuses for their attachment. We absolutely can make excuses for our behavior that we deep down know to be in opposition to our own self-improvement, but just because we can make excuses doesn't mean we should. Some might be hearing this and think, I hear what you're saying, Hermes, but this world is so damn terrible and deceptive that no matter what I do, that will still be present. And to that I say, shut up. I also could play that game of insisting victimhood to be true, and that we are but cogs in a wheel, and that we are slaves to a matrix that only imprisons. I could play that game of master-slave, but I'm not asleep enough to consent to that idea. This world is full of lies, because this world is a lie. This world is illusory in its nature, 
It is an illusion meant to be transcended. So if we trust our five senses to give us the optimum interpretation of so-called reality, then we can't transcend. When a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, it must break out of its cocoon in order to fly and enter its new existence. This is a great metaphor for what the living souls are going through. We've built up walls around ourselves in order to break out of them. Doesn't that sound backwards? Well, this is how alchemy is achieved in the micro and macro cosmic sense. The true alchemist poisons himself and then transmutes that poison, limits himself, and then expands beyond his wildest imagination. When one has committed to this path of true transformation, one is actually unable to fall back asleep. And if one tries to go back to sleep, well, they'll be shaken up. Once we've tasted the aliveness flowing within the heart, we are unable to truly embrace unconsciousness again. So let us stay awake, aware, and alive. Awake, aware, and alive. Don't miss a beat. Your heart is beating and it calls on you to know it now, to live it now, and to be it now. Be the art of the heart. Keep up the great work.
got the power 